I'm Chad. I'm Dad. No, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be Dad first. Oh yeah. You're Dad. I'm Dad. I'm Chad. And this is our channel. Where are you going to speak? I'm speechless. Just, or just be quiet. I'm speechless. It's like uh, Christmas morning. Christmas in March, it's the 31st. Yeah, Christmas. Oh, it almost came on April Fool's Day. Yeah, really. Some good packing, man. I like that crate and the way they packed everything up. Wow. All right, Dad, I'll grab all this if you want to grab the this guy. So we need to order the that mount for that, that iPad. That'd be neat if the iPad would fit right into that. Okay guys, we started on the avionics. So the panel came in and we went ahead and mounted it. Here are some of the pieces we have our backup battery, our vertical power unit, some various boxes of GA24, and this is the GPS20. And then we have our radio here, remote radio, that will be controlled through the GDU460, that's a GDR20. And then this is our transponder right here. This is the GTX45R. So it comes with a, a little mounting box here. The question I'm asking you guys, hopefully someone on here has done this. I'll get to that in a second. Here's our ELT and GPS antenna, several miscellaneous pieces here, contactors. These are for our Garmin servos, but we, we're not gonna use those. We actually bought the kit from Rands, so we won't use those. There's one of the servos, we have two of them, and we're about to mount those guys. That's what that kit, that's from Rands. So we were about to start that tonight, and Dad and I got sidetracked. I'll show you what we did here in a second. But that's the kit, the install kit from Rands. And then we have some exhaust gas probes and a fuel flow transducer which I didn't realize it came in the sensor kit from Garmin, but it does. So that's good. I thought I was gonna have to buy that from Rands. We weren't gonna use that. And then when I started reading about tuning the um, fuel injection, that's needed. So these are just miscellaneous boxes, antennas. There is an antenna here. I believe this is for the ELT, but it's kind of overwhelming. Everything came in that crate right there showed up the other day we took a video of unboxing so my question for you guys is there's there's everything mounted again we haven't got our second gdu 460 yet we're going to put a an ipad there and if it does everything that we want to do then we're not going to add one but if it doesn't then we'll add a second and it's pretty simple the way that that works there's actually a pin here so you can actually mount three of these so one GDU four, so you can mount three GDU four sixties, and there is a serial port behind here. I don't know if you can see it; it's right there. There's two of them, so that would go to another GDU four sixty, and then the one below it would go to another GDU four sixty. I believe so. 
I believe that's what those are for. So when we do get ready to mount the second one, it's just gonna be basically making a jumper wire from there to here on that serial port. Uh, this is the G5 backup unit, and this guy will, has its backup battery, so it will come on. Now it's not hooked up to anything, pitot tubes or anything else it hooks to, and, and excuse me because I don't know <laughs> what else it hooks to at this point. But uh, I don't know if you can even see that. Yeah, there it's coming into focus. Like I said, that's got its own backup battery, so that's the only thing that's... I don't know what I just did there. I need to turn this guy off. Power off in three, two, one. Power off. Okay, so this is the GMC... I can't remember. 507, 307. It's the newest one out for the autopilot. These are our switches, so we've got a dual switch here off. That's uh, battery, and then that's battery and alternator. If we have a problem, we can just switch straight to battery. Or off, avionics master, fuel pump, strobe lights, nav lights, and landing and taxi lights. That's a three-way switch. And then, talked about it before, we're using the vertical power unit, and it will wigwag at whatever mile per hour we decide to, to wigwag at. Um, this is the magnetometer. Again, backup battery. And the next step is we're going to mount our servos for our autopilot. And we are trying to figure out where we want to mount all these boxes here, the vertical power and the Garmin boxes and the backup battery. We know where the ELT is gonna go, but one, two, three, four, five, six boxes. And there's not a whole lot of pictures. We've been looking and looking on the internet. There's not a lot of pictures. This came with the kit, okay? And I thought about mounting the transponder and the radio into here, and then maybe using some AL clamps and mounting the other guys here. And then my second thought was, why don't I just trim this guy maybe like this and to where it's flush with this, this pipe here, tubing, okay? So that gets rid of that. And then have an aluminum piece of aluminum cut that basically will set in here and basically wrap around and also go on top of this right here. So basically a piece, I'll have it cut, CNC cut to where it just fits right in here. And that way we can mount all of our boxes and then set this guy, come in here and set it in as one unit with all the boxes already mounted. The only thing I thought about that was it would be an enclosed compartment. So that might be it might the heat might be a problem so then I even thought about cutting some you know maybe one inch or two inch holes in it to allow for air but my question to you guys is if anybody's watching this that has done this what do you guys think about that idea of having one solid piece of aluminum cut that i can lay in here and then mount it with edel clamps and then use nut plates and then, then I can mount all my boxes and, and plug into them. I thought that might be easier than doing edel clamps and say mounting the, the radio here or one of the boxes here and then trying to put a box underneath. Thought it would be easier just to, to have one plate, you know, aluminum plate, and then having all the boxes mounted and just sliding the thing in, setting it down, having the edel clamps ready to go to where I know where they all bolt together and it's just one piece. And then if we ever needed to service it, we take all these screws out, pop the, the front out, have our service loop where this guy can, can come out. And then that way we could service any of the boxes if they needed servicing. So guys, we're asking for your help. Anybody knows what to do here. If that idea is kosher, if that's gonna work with a, a solid plate, let me know your thoughts. Ask your friends because I'm about to probably go that route we have put in some emails to some people to see what they thought and this is a time that i wish mike patey's hanger was next to mine <laughs> because i sure would be bugging the crud out of him but anyway that's the main question so that's going to be the video for the week got the we haven't been working a whole lot i've on the airplane dad and i have been working i've been working my job so dad's like hey i'm gonna go work at the railroad on the train a little bit and his i guess retirement job he's been putting in some hours but i'll i'll post some of that here we took some video of him driving the train but we got the coal packs mounted hadn't had done a whole lot really in the last month we've maybe worked 10 hours on the plane which really stinks because we were hoping to have this thing done by 
Oshkosh 2021. It's not going to happen. So definitely going to see you guys at Oshkosh 2022. Hopefully have the airplane in the Rand's booth and it will be there for you guys to check out and hopefully buy one like we did. There was a couple planes there that, that people were nice enough to, to let people check out, climb in and out of, and, and we kind of want to to pass it on to, to someone else maybe that's looking to, to buy one. So 2022, we will be there at Oshkosh, God willing. And again, guys, let us know about what you think. If you've done it, mounting a plate here. And what I plan on doing is, is, is maybe cutting this, I don't know, maybe like this and down, putting an L, a piece of angle iron here. That way gives some stability or I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping I use a thick enough piece of aluminum or, or maybe even have it to where it, it doesn't go, it doesn't cover this part up. Maybe it just goes, you know, from here over to here, you know, and this is open because I, you know, it's six boxes to mount. We could even mount some of them on the bottom, some on the top, and then I would cut holes and run grommets and run, you know, the wiring through the grommets to keep it from getting chafed. But anyway, guys, let us know what you think. Hopefully you have a friend or you or somebody knows what to do here. Like I said, I don't want to make a decision and then regret it because, you know, you have 20, 30 hours and something and then go, damn, that was a big waste of time. So again, that's the avionics in. There's everything that came in. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Hey guys, thanks for watching another episode of Dad and Chad. If you like this video, share it with your friends and give us a thumbs up. And never miss an episode of Dad and Chad by hitting that subscribe button. Because we'll be back next Tuesday with another episode. Thanks again for watching Dad and Chad. <laughs>